Hi all, everything in my video is pulled from the public domain and I am using them under the Fair Use Fair Dealings Guidelines. Everything I say is my own opinion. You should look into this information for yourselves, but I'm pretty sure I'm right. Good morning, you guys. Well, this is going to be a kind of a, I don't know if you would call it a different video, but Neil Sean did two topics uh, this week that I thought I wanted to touch on because of basically the information he put out. So we're just going to take a quick look at those, okay? And we're also going to look at a couple of new articles that have come out. So let's go. You guys know I did this big debunking video. It's huge. It's called the big debunk. And then there was a second video after that where we talked about the things that Harry and Megan said in the interview that turned out to be big fat lies. And some of it we couldn't really debunk, but we were able to later on. Well, here's one of those things. I wondered why Scooby-Doo put up this tweet saying that they, they didn't want a title for their child, Archie which goes against the following that we saw. So let me refresh your memory. Watch this. Member of color in this family not being titled in the same way that other grandchildren would be. First, she insinuates that the titles aren't being given because her child will be the first member of color in the family, which actually is inaccurate. The conversation is, there's a convention, I don't know if it's George V or George VI convention that when you're the grandchild of the monarch, so when Harry's dad becomes king, automatically Archie and our next baby would become prince or princess mm -hmm. or whatever they're going to. So she is aware of the George V um, letters painting or whatever it was he did that said that only the eldest son of the eldest son gets the prince title. She's aware of that. And she's also aware that her child will get that title as soon as Charles becomes the king. Now listen to this statement. That convention I'm talking about, while I was pregnant, they said they want to change the convention for Archie. Mm. Well, why? Did you get an answer? No. You still don't have an answer. And of course, what we are now aware of is that Charles has been talking for years to slim down the monarchy. Therefore, Harry's children were never going to get the prince and princess title. And of course, Megan put the spin on it that it's for a completely different reason. After they've walked away from the royal family, she still wants her kids to have those titles. They didn't want him to be a prince or a princess, not knowing what the gender would be, which would be different from pro yeah. birthright, to then make a choice about. Okay, so it feels to me like... The reason we're going backwards and looking at all this is Neil Sean put up one of his fabulous videos where he stated he's, he, of course, he has contacts in the palace. And apparently, Harry and Meghan together and separately both told Prince Charles that they did not want a title for their baby. Then the Earl title was offered at the last minute. And again, they both said, no, thank you. But then they went on Oprah and claimed that their child wasn't being treated the same as the other children. So basically what it comes down to was Megan wanted her kids to have the title of prince or princess and nothing else was gonna do. Because after all, titles are everything. Megan, the Duchess of Sussex. I'm Megan, the Duchess of Sussex. I'm Megan, the Duchess of Sussex. So Neil Sean's story basically covered the fact that now they want those titles for their kids, probably because they want to commercialize stuff and there are no titles and now they're regretting it. All right, moving on to our next story. Next thing we're going to cover is another story that was also covered by Neil Sean. I thought this was super important to point out. Now we all know about the earth shot and the prize and this thing has taken off globally. I mean, it's just amazing what what William and Catherine have done with this. And of course, David Attenborough. We know how proud Charles was. I mean, the environment has been his lifelong passion and William is carrying it on. And it was apparently announced that night that the next Earthshot Prize ceremony is going to be held in the United States. It's going to be global. It's going to be even bigger than it was in the UK. And it was pretty darn big there. So these two are apparently very upset because they feel that the United States is their territory. They're trying to build their brand here and they don't want anybody from the family interfering. But seeing how big it was and seeing how many stars came to it, apparently Harry and Meghan's office reached out to William and Kate's office and they offered to help them with the Earthshot Prize and the awards and all the glittering wonderful stuff when they get to the United States. 
Now, this isn't going to work for several reasons. First reason is William still has not forgiven Harry and Meghan for the Oprah interview. Number two, William is very aware that if the four of them join forces, there'll be more attention placed on their brotherly relationship, the fights, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, than what's really important, which is the Earthshot Prize. Number three, let's not forget Harry and Meghan have already joined up with global citizens for their part of the environment. My thought process is why would they want to join back up with the very family that they said were soul crushing and racist and that never apologized to Megan for the things Megan said they did wrong to her? It doesn't take a genius to figure out they're trying to stay connected to the royal family because without those connections, they're dead in the water and the royal family's just not having any of it. That's why Harry didn't go back for the party for the Diana statue that took place a few months later. He was told no taping, no wiring, no Netflix, no nothing. So he figured why go. And his behavior at the actual unveiling of the statue was absolutely atrocious and he ran off after 20 minutes. I mean, really. We can all see what's going on here. William and Kate continue to work. William's book made a ton of money. Every bit of it went to charity. Catherine's book made a ton of money. Every bit of it went to charity. Megan's book flopped. She's got a ton of them. They're not selling. They're just trying to get them gone at this point. Oh, and every dime went into her own pocket. While Catherine and William remain focused on helping others, Harry and Meghan remain focused on lining their own pockets. The Netflix deal, you know, the Spotify deal, which I think is gone at this point. On and on and on. Now they're meeting up with the guy who does infomercials. She's probably going to be coming out with a line of makeup. They met with the people from Starbucks. I mean, they've gone completely off course. And I don't think Harry even sees it. Good thing he's juggling in this picture because he literally has become the court joke. So a few more items to cover. The first one is that Prince Harry on November 9th, right before Meghan's case in the high court on the 10th, is going to discuss the internet lie machine at a tech summit panel on misinformation. You know, I really can't figure out what he's going to say since he himself is absolutely guilty of putting out misinformation. I'm just going to give you one example right off the top of my head. They admitted that they put out the tweet that Megan had gone into labor, even though she had already had the baby and they were back at Frogmore Cottage. And he said he did that for safety and security. That is still an online lie. Mm hmm. Next, we had this story that the royal family may not be inviting Harry and Meghan to come back for the Platinum Jubilee celebration. Now, this story could go one, either, you know, one of either way. Number one, Harry and Meghan don't want to return. Meghan's not going to return anyway. It would have been just Harry. I've said it before. I'll say it again. She'll never step foot on UK soil. The spin on the story is that Harry would pull the attention away from the Queen uh, and therefore, it might ruin the things because, you know, the processions and all these festivities because people might actually throw things at Harry, which I th find is correct. My thought process is the royal family should not invite him because of all the rotten, horrible things he's done. He doesn't want to be in the family, so he should not be there to celebrate. There you go. And the last thing we're going to cover is apparently Meghan Markle is blocking her phone number and making cold calls is what they're called to senators and pushing her agenda for the paid family leave act what i find interesting is that she's calling these people on their private numbers the question is how did she get those numbers who gave them to her and the answer to that is senator gillibrand who gave out personal phone numbers of other senators knowing that Meghan markle was gonna come a calling shame so one of the senators said that her, her call came in blocked and she goes, is this Senator Capito? And the response was yes. And Megan goes, well, this is Megan, the Duchess of Sussex. And this senator said, I couldn't figure out how she got my number. My suggestion is to change phone numbers immediately and only give it to a few people. That way she doesn't have direct contact to you. Senator Collins was actually amused that Megan called and immediately used her British title. She said she called her on a private line and she introduced herself as a Dutch duchess right off the bat. Megan was yakking in the senator's ears about how important the paid leave is because apparently they don't already know this and they're already working on it. But apparently she feels that her making calls to people is somehow going to fix the problem. She really is trying to interject herself, but she's interjecting herself as a duchess and that's the problem. 
I usually don't do this, but I'm doing it this time. I recommend what this person said. Contact Philip Reeker at the London Embassy. You can write to them. Contact your local representatives. Contact your local Senate, your governor. You know, and if people from the United States don't complain enough, she's never going to stop. So what do you guys think about the stories? The title thing kind of bothers me because you know that if... Um, her daughter gets the title of princess. It'll be, you can dress like Princess Little Bit. Here's a Princess Little Bit doll. Here's the Princess Little Bit clothing line. I mean, they're going to totally merch the kids. I mean, they're already merching Archie with Archiewell. And what do you guys think about Harry and Meghan wanting to go back and join forces with Catherine and William on Earthshot? I personally think that would be a huge mistake. What do you think about Meghan cold calling all these senators? And what about the royal family wanting to take back the invitation to the Platinum Jubilee? And what are your thoughts on Harry going to talk about internet lies when he himself is guilty of spreading them? Don't forget to hit the subscribe button to be notified of future uploads. Don't forget to leave your comments below. You know how much I love to read them and I put them in future videos. Don't forget you can follow me on Twitter. Don't forget about my email address. And for those of you who donated to my coffee fund, thank you so much. And as always, you guys, have a great day.